Hey everyone, welcome back to Watch Trading Academy and today we are looking at a brand that very few people care about, the Bell & Ross. And I'm going to tell you how and why we're looking at this brand because I'm going to show you how you can literally use this brand to turn 1k into $10,000. That's right. This seems to be something that most people own, that have very little money to their name only seem to dream about having $10,000 to their name. So I'm going to show you how to use a brand as very like not popular as Bell & Ross and literally do that. Now remember here at Watch Trading Academy, we're the only place where you can really learn how to trade luxury watches and create a really hyper lucrative business doing it. There is a reason we've been doing it since 2005. There's a reason we've been teaching it since 2010. And the watch industry again is expected to be what a $33 billion business until you know, the next like five years. So again, this is a huge opportunity, highly untapped in. And over the last two years, we've seen not only explosive growth, but only the beginning of what will be one of the greatest industries that exists. So don't underestimate the watch game learn by clicking the link in the description, take the free training, learn why watch trading is something you need to be doing. And secondly, join Watch Trading Academy, second link, and actually learn how to do this in detail, right? <clears throat> Bell & Ross is a brand that a lot of jewelers don't look at, don't buy, uh, and don't trade. So because of that, brands like Bell & Ross, Yulee Stardin, Hublot, etc., are the laughing stock of the watch industry. They're not RM, they're not AP, they're not Patek, they're not Rolex. So a lot of people just don't deal with them. And a lot of new watch enthusiasts coming into the game who have limited budgets do mess with them. Just like Omega, uh, just like Panerai and Yuli Stalman. These are secondary brands that are popular and have somewhat of a little mini cult following. But again, they are not very notoriously traded by real jewelers and uh, big box jewelry stores. So now, why? Particularly because they don't really bring their words. So, well, you know, I would say on an average, a Bell & Ross watch is basically 80% off. So if a lot of people don't know that, but that's really how this watch industry is. So as an example, if you have a $5,000 watch, right? Like this is basically like, hey, like this is 5K is the MSRP of the watch. You basically have roughly a $1,000 watch. That's what it's real cost is. So most jewelers will typically try to buy a 5k watch at a thousand on trade and then, you know, try to sell it for like two or 2,500 and basically make their money. Like they sell, they, they trade at around 80 cents. They sell around 60 off. So, you know, it's really where that market is. It's a 20 cents market, which is okay. But again, that's where that goes. So what does this mean? Uh, why you need to pay attention to this? Well, because jewelers are the ones that basically avoid this brand, it gives us watch traders an incredible opportunity to buy these margins. Now, I would argue that a lot of times people don't realize that it's in the things that others aren't looking for where you find the most margin and the most excitement. Uh, if you're buying what everyone else is buying, you're in a highly competitive market. So if you were to buy a Rolex, let's say Daytona, everyone and their cousin is buying Rolex Daytona. So like jewelers, watch traders, uh, end users, so everybody. So the market becomes hyper competitive and the margins get smaller because one person's paying slightly more, et cetera. And then these margins get gapped. So what that means is on an example, if you had a Rolex deal for $10,000, like the average wholesaler makes like $600 that's like a pathetic excuse for trading a watch. Like, think about it. That's like terrible, right? I mean, it's just awful. Like, it just doesn't make sense to take $10,000 worth of liability to make $600 is just stupid. The argument here is that if you have a Bell & Ross, for example, that you bought for like 1200 and you can sell it for, let's say 1600, well, that's a $400 margin but it's a $1,200 product. And you have to start thinking that way if you're trading, which means if you're making $400, right? It's pretty exciting because it's like 30% plus instead of 5%. So it just makes sense to trade things that people don't know how to trade or don't wanna learn because they don't see the upside. First off, much lower cost to entry, right? Than the average Rolex. Secondly, much higher margin than average Rolex. So again, it just makes sense. Like it's just one of these things that 
you need to focus on. And that's why I wanna bring attention to this brand because a lot of people, again, are not looking at them and it makes sense. So there's three, I mean, I would say there's really two core sizes for Bell & Ross that you need to consider and it's 42 and 46. 46 is kind of like larger. It does still trade okay. I don't want you to think because it's 46, it just means huge. it's a square, it'll trade. So the 46 and 42 are the most traded product, basically. It's not a female, male size. They're two completely different sizes. The goal with every single Bell & Ross is to basically bring a 30% margin. The idea is you can find many BR0392s in the 1500 range and if you do $1,500, I just want you to understand because we just saw that we're talking about a 30% margin. This is your buy price at 1,500. These watches are usually listed somewhere around 22 to 2,500. It's pretty easy to get them around 1,500. If you're talking about 30%, that's basically $450 added to every trade you do. The average trade for Ben L. Ross is about 2.5 weeks. This is important to note because you see with each and every type of kind of model like this, you start to understand how fast you can multiply money. Now, some of you are watching this, you're like, why do I care about $450? But it's not about that. It's about $450 in context to $1,500. That's how you have to start looking at money. You can't look at money as, well, I only care about $4,000. Everybody starts with a different zero in their life, right? So there are some people out there who only have $1,500 to start. So knowing that in two and a half weeks, they can make that $1,500 into basically 1950 is pretty exciting to them, right? And if you keep this going basically, and you just keep adding 30% to the pool, you take again 30%, you're talking about roughly about $600. And again, another 2.5 weeks. And in basically a month and a half, this is what I want you to just understand, you add this to that, and now you have roughly, let's just round it up and say you have about $2,500. We're gonna round down well, this is again impressive because in a month, you raised your $1,500 and you raised it up almost 60% to an extra $1,000, you're now $2,500. Now, again, you see this compounding kind of ideology continues to go up and this is the beauty of watch trading. You can keep compounding again. And a lot of times people, again, don't realize how simple this is. This is not a very complex business. That's why it's effective. Good business is always simple business. Your business is very complicated. Typically, it doesn't make you a lot of cash in your pocket. Now, let's just say, for the sake of argument, as you get better at selling this, let's say you don't even get that good at selling it. You just get a little bit better. And it now takes you two weeks instead of uh, two and a half weeks, right? Slightly better, you do something over time. Now, if you add up what you have in your bank account again, now you keep going up, right? Because you have 500, you have, so again, you have 3250. 3250 and I want you to just just see that with a two week time frame. Now, again, you keep doing this and now you add what about 900 and again I'm writing these down because I'm not trying to get down to a $1 whatever margin. But now in two weeks, so one month later again, again another month goes by. This was a month and a half, right? Like 1.5. This was now one month. And I want you to see this again. Now you have two weeks later another 900 and now your money is 4,000, right? Roughly $100. And two and a half months have gone by. But remember, you started with $1,500. So in two and a half months, you just went from $1,500 to $4,100. And here's the exciting part again. If we keep this going one more time, and again, this is just one more, and then you can keep doing the math upside. Now look at each margin is giving you a $1,200 profit margin, let's say it still takes you two weeks and you're still not good enough to do it any faster. Again, now your next batch right here is about $5,300. Now, the reason this is very important to understand and the reason why or how we can multiply this to literally double in how quickly you can actually get this to 10, and I'm gonna show you this, this little trick so that people don't, don't understand how business works. This is contextually assuming that you're taking this money, right? And continuously just investing it in a more expensive watch, right? So historically you would have to find Bell and Ross's in the 5K ranges, which isn't what you wanna do. The point of this is to 
understand that with watch trading, this number keeps coming down, like it gets faster and better. So from two and a half weeks, two weeks to one week, that's the goal. So while the first like six months may be kind of like shaky ups and downs, you could literally duplicate this like within a two month time frame once you get good at it instead of six and then eventually a one month time frame and have more capital to do it. The bigger and better benefit here is that you could even take, once you get to this 5K, buy three watches at once and start to multiply these so the time frame starts to get lower and the volume starts to get higher again. The argument that I'm trying to make is that in as little as 90 days, you could almost triple your 1500. And then in an additional 60 days after, if I continue this math, you could get to $10,000 starting with as little as $1,500 and a very average brand that people aren't looking at. So it's much easier to find, et cetera. And in the course, we teach you exactly how to, how to actually like buy these at the right dollars, how to negotiate them from like 3K to 1500 and also how to actually start selling them so you can move them. So you don't have to wait around like till someone buys your watch. So. Again, this is just a, a very simple math problem, but this is the simplicity of watch trading as a whole and why Bell & Ross is such a, a good brand to start if you're a novice watch trader and wanna start. I mean, we can go into Panerai, et cetera, but you're gonna need three to 5K to start with Panerai versus here. You can do it with as little as 750 to like 2K. That's a pretty easy thing to do. So I just wanted to show you this because sometimes the math escapes people. The other arguments that people aren't understanding is that most people can put together $4,000. And a lot of times we have a shortage of money, which is basically like a $1,000, right? Like we need a thousand bucks for something. If you add up like what a person makes working a, a minimum income job, like at, at a normal place, like a Panera Bread or something, they're making like a thousand bucks every two weeks, you know? So the argument I'm trying to make here is that let's say you had four grand to your name, you could literally make $1,200 every two weeks, even if you did nothing else. So, so this formula here isn't just about taking 1500 and duplicating, it's about understanding that at each component of the dollar, what it means to trade a watch in, in what type of time frame. And this is a pretty powerful concept to just understand and be able to manage into whatever brand you choose to do. But here, doing it with Bell & Ross gives you a, a competitive edge and an opportunity to do that. So. Just wanted to share this with you guys, so hopefully you understand how to turn a thousand bucks into ten thousand dollars with Valen Ross. But more importantly, you learn how in two weeks you can take forty-one hundred dollars and make an extra twelve hundred dollars with trading one watch, not even multiple watches. One watch, thirty percent margin on a brand that's not as popular as Rolex, AP Paddock, and so on and so forth. Again, learn how to do this. Click the link in the description and join Watch Trading Academy. Like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and more content like this coming to Watch Trading Academy. I'll see you guys next time.